Well, good morning again, church. It's Monday and it is uh, April 13th. We've entered another week together in our devotions. And this morning we continue on in prayer using the book of James in chapter 5. Uh, many of you might recall that I've been, uh, well, prior to Easter and prior to coronavirus, uh, I was preaching through uh, James and we had actually come up to James and specifically uh, chapter 13 and I've uh, not been able to finish uh, James with all the uh, uh, coronavirus and the shutdowns and uh, also with the blessing of Easter and and uh, preaching on Palm Sunday and the truth of the victory that was in Palm Sunday and the showing of Christ on Palm Sunday and then of course the blessed resurrection uh, that we spoke of yesterday. Well, this morning I want to continue on uh, with our prayer discussion, our prayer devotions, and I pray that as we've been going through this for the last couple of weeks, a little bit longer than that, that uh, you're growing in your prayer life, uh, whether we are mature and seasoned in prayer or we are fledgling, that is just getting started, uh, we can be thankful that the presence of God uh, leads us in prayer, and as we have seen uh, in our devotions, that there is a pattern, there is a way in Christ in which we must make a priority. We saw that to be Jesus' words where he told uh, those who believe in him to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and then all these things shall be added. So our first and utmost priority is to be seekers of God's kingdom. Um, the kingdom of heaven is like uh, our hope, our anticipation of what God is bringing forth and will be realized in his literal kingdom, but not forgetting that today we walk in the spiritual kingdom. We have the presence of God within us as he has given us in Christ the presence of his Holy Spirit to dwell in us and to guide us and to lead us and direct us, and he has he has and will continue to do these things even in what we are focused on in our devotions, which is prayer. And so <clears throat> we seek his kingdom, <clears throat> excuse me, and his righteousness, that is Christ and his rightness before the Lord. We know that Christ had no sin, but he became sin for us. And so in Christ, our sins were placed on Christ on the cross, and Christ placed upon us himself, his righteousness, his rightness before God. And so that when God looks upon us that believe, he doesn't see us as uh, the sinful uh, creatures, the, creature, uh, the sinful beings uh, that we have been and that what we continue to slip and to do in our life. But no, he sees us in Christ. And uh, if you ever want a powerful study, a search on a, a good word searcher in a concordance, uh, the two words put together, in Christ. And that's the power of the resurrection, that he has made us new, he has made us alive in Christ. So therefore, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, all of our needs, our daily needs, uh, those hierarchy of needs, and uh, they, they will be added unto us. As we pray, we learned also the manner in which to pray. Our Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then we went through each uh, part of the prayer. And it's the parts where we ask for our daily bread and the parts where we ask uh, for forgiveness for our sin as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And and so the, the needful things that we pray, the trouble begins... Uh, in our self nature to war against or to fight against what Jesus has said. And what Jesus has said is that ask whatever in my name and I will give it to you. And we know the purpose is to glorify the Father. Now, the prayer has to be made rightly and in the proper condition before God. And so we have to keep the whole context of Scripture together as we lift our prayers. But we need to stop uh, arguing within ourselves. 
over how God will answer that prayer or over when God would answer that prayer, but believing, pray, and God will hear. James has something incredible to say about this this morning in chapter 5, and the two verses that I'm going to key in on uh, are James 5 and verse 15, where it says, in the prayer of faith, the prayer of faith, believing, not wavering in doubt, but the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. Um, and then it goes on from there, but that's the first key verse. And then the second one is chapter, James chapter 5 and verse 16, but it's the last sentence of that verse where he says, the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. So the prayer of faith and the, the resolve of the prayer of faith, faith will save the one who is sick. And then the second verse that I want to focus on is the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. So I, I'm, we can't ignore the context of James chapter 5 here. And so I, I want you to see something that, that, I, uh, that is special to me, and that's verses uh, 13 and 14 of James chapter 5 talks to us and speaks to us corporately. Remember, James was written to the church that was dispersed abroad, uh, and Christian Jews, those who had put their faith in Jesus Christ, but were scattered about the Gentile nations. And, and that's that's the address of the letter to James, and that it's incorporated in the Word of God and is known as the Word of God. It also is applicable to us who are scra uh, in Christ who are scattered across the uh, the nations of the world. And so in verses 13 and 14, he's talking to the church. He says, is anyone among you, that's the church, is anyone that we gather with, our brothers and sisters in Christ, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Then he says, is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, using the Psalms to sing praise. So anyone among you suffering, pray. Anyone uh, among you who are cheerful, pray uh, through the songs, the hymns uh, that is found in the Word of God, which is all about praising God. Um, then he says, is anyone among you sick? And he gives a, a different solution here. It doesn't mean that the one who is sick doesn't pray themselves, but it says, let the one who is sick call for the elders of the church and let them pray over the one who is sick. All right. So the context is a church setting here, and um, I'm, I'm going to put the words this, this way: in our duty to pray for one another. In fact, it actually says that uh, in our context here that in verse 16 that we are to pray for one another, confessing to one another uh, our sins, our weaknesses, and praying for one another. How, how different is that from judging one another? Uh, brothers and sisters, that we pray for one another. Instead of getting irked or disappointed or despaired because we see uh, things go the wrong direction, instead of judging one another, instead of being upset with one another, what if we just simply prayed for one another? We're going to see the power of that in the context. But let's go back up to verse 13. He asked, in the church, is there anyone among us who is suffering? That word suffering uh, is uh, undergoing hardship, uh, going through afflictions. It's not a, a disease within us that causes us to be ill, but it's pressures about us, temptations e exerted upon us, uh, hardships, whether they be financial, family, uh, jobs, all these things that we encounter as we walk through life. If anyone uh, is suffering, let him pray. What are we going to pray? For God's blessing, for God's protection, for God's wisdom to navigate through these things. And so instead of being discouraged by our sufferings, we are to pray and giving them to Jesus, trusting that our prayers will be heard and answered. So suffering is not a sickness as in an illness of a, a cough or a cold, but suffering. Um, there are many who are not... Uh, uh, positive with the, the COVID-19 virus. There are many who might even be tested positive, but they're not uh, suffering from the effects of it. This, but, but all of us in many ways and in various ways are suffering, uh, undergoing hardship 
uh, to the fact that our, our jobs have been closed temporarily. Uh, we pray that uh, uh, the many will not be closed permanently because of economic hardship. Uh, but we, we are undergoing uh, just a dramatic time of change in, in <clears throat> the way that we do things and the, you know, the way that we interact with one another. And so that's a, that's a hardship. What are we to do? Pray. Okay, so the, the first one is a suffering, hardship. Then he says cheerful. We, we, we can see the blessings there when we're in peaceful valleys. Things, uh, blessings are being cast upon us. And so we, we want to sing uh, God uh, great songs of, of praise to him during those times. He switches, uh, doesn't switch, but he goes further to say, in our church, anyone amongst us sick. Now that word sick in verse 14, I want you to, to write this down. I want you to note it. It means someone who is feeble, uh, sick, uh, we'll, we'll call it in the emotional heart, feeble, weak. But it also means someone who is diseased. So now we're talking a literal uh, illness in the form of cold, viruses, uh, cancers, heart problems, lung problems. If any of you uh, are sick, we um, are shown by the Holy Spirit that we are to call in the elders, the pastors of the church. So there's a great responsibility on the pastors, but there's also a great responsibility upon the church members. Um, just because you have something doesn't mean, mean, doesn't mean somebody knows about it. Doesn't mean the pastor uh, can know everything that's going on in the church. So your responsibility as a church member, my responsibility as a church member, is to call the pastor. Um, it's not a roundabout way either. We're not supposed to tell someone to tell the pastor. That's not what the Bible says. If we're going to have effective prayer, then we must follow the word of God and stop deviating from it. So if a person is sick and they don't personally, their own self, call the pastor, then they cannot expect the blessing of, of, of what has been given to us as a church. It's really that simple. God's word is not to be minimized. It's not to be negotiated. It's not to be added to, and it's not to be taken away from. So we have a responsibility that when we're under hardship to pray, we have a responsibility that when God's blessing us and we're in the peaceful valley to pray, and then we have a responsibility that when we fall under uh, illnesses that come from disease, uh, viruses, um, when we're weak, when we're feeble, that we are to call the elders and let them pray over him. And it refers to the, the anointing with oil in the name of the Lord. The key there is the the name of the Lord, the anointing of oil, can be literal in that we uh, apply oil, but the oil that we apply is not the healing agent. No, it's the name of Jesus, and the anointing represents the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who prays uh, things on our behalf that we don't know how to express in words, uh, the Holy Spirit who groans within us, lifting prayers to the throne room um, <clears throat> in, in the times where we literally don't know what to say or how to say them or just uh, under great hardship. So um, we see that format, and that's to the church. Now, I, I want you to see that, that verse 15 uh, kind of takes our attention here to the one who is praying. And I want you to see this and, and think about it here of what he's saying. In, in, in verse 15, he says in the prayer of the faith. Now, if you're if you're sick, I call the elder, call the pastor. And the prayer of faith, who's praying at this moment? The elder. The prayer of faith will save the one who is sick. All right, so really the one who has been called upon to pray now is the one that verse 15 is addressing. And it says, and the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick. The one who is sick here uh, is a different word. The word sick is different in the Greek language. We actually... Verse 13 is a different word from verse 14, and verse 14 is a different word uh, from verse 15. And so having a Greek concordance, you can find these words, but when he says the one who is sick is the one who is in toil, uh, the one who is tired, uh, the one who is faint and wearied. Why are they faint and wearied? From praying, from doing the work of God. The prayer of faith will save 
The word save there means deliver, protect, heal, make uh, whole again the one who is toiling, working for the Lord. Uh, what great faith, what, what great strengthening that as we pray, and we're pouring everything that we have into the Lord in prayer. When the battle in our ear is, oh, he may not answer it in our time, or oh, will he answer it the way that I'm praying it? Um, oh, is this the Lord's will, or is it my will? All those battles of the ear, instead of the focus of prayer, are taking place. When that wears us down, when that beats us up, he says, the power of faith. Don't doubt when you pray. Believe. When the doubt tries to come in your ear, reject it in the name of Jesus. The prayer of faith will save the one who is wearied from toil. And the Lord will raise him up. Uh, that word raise, by the way, there is the same word that is used about Jesus in the power of his resurrection. We're to live in the power of the resurrection, church. Uh, the Lord will raise him up. What does that mean? He will be our strength. He will refuel us. He will refeed us. He will, he will lift us up as we continue in the prayer of faith. I wonder sometimes if many prayers are <clears throat> never answered because the weary just stopped praying. Uh, the, the stuff that was coming in the ears while we were praying, we took in and believed instead of having prayer of faith. Uh, so many times we're quick to blame God for the yes, no, or maybe. Uh, maybe it's time we look in the mirror and say, who's doing the praying and who is believing what is prayed? Um, we, we need to take responsibility in what the word of God has given us here. Um, after he says to uh, the, the, the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, uh, it, it adds here, if he's committed sin, sin of doubt, when it comes in your ear, when he, if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven Therefore, what's what's the purpose of all this praying and, and understanding what God is saying? Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another. David had, we already saw this in, in another lesson, so I don't have time to go through it now. Uh, but David in the Old Testament said, if I cherish sin in my heart, God would not hear me. So as a body, as a church, we are one in Jesus Christ. And as one, if we have sins against one another, if we have doubts amongst ourselves, then that is sin. The prayer of faith, God will heal that sin. And we, um, um, as we have been forgiven, should forgive those who have trespasses against us. So we should confess to one another so that our prayers be not hindered. And it says that you may be healed. Then it goes into... Um, the second verse that I want to show you in verse 16, this last sentence, the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Uh, now, if you are uh, an old King James Version person that uh, is written uh, quite differently, um, using the same words, just uh, in, in a different order, it says the, uh, let me find it here real quick, it says the effectual, fervent, the, the effective, Continuous, powerful prayer of a righteous man availeth much. What, what is James saying here? Um, the prayer of a righteous person. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I am righteous only in Christ Jesus. There is nothing of me that is righteous. And there is nothing of you that is righteous. What do I mean by that? There is nothing of you, there is nothing of me that is right before God. Jesus Christ is the mediator, and he, through his blood and resurrection, has made us right to God. So a righteous person is not perfect in themselves. A righteous person is not moralistically true in themselves. Um, a righteous person is one who walks in Christ. Because Christ is the righteousness of God. And so the prayer of one who walks in Christ, his righteous person, has great power. Stop for a moment. Do you actually believe that? Are those cute, nice words, but it applies to somebody else? 
You're not walking in Jesus at this moment if you think that. Walk in Jesus. He has said, the Holy Spirit has said, the prayer of a righteous person. Are you righteous? Are you in Christ Jesus? If, if you say, I don't know, that can be remedied right at this moment. Believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins and that God raised him from the dead. Why did he die for your sins? Because you're a sinner in need of forgiveness. God's holy law has been broken by you. Christ Jesus paid the penalty in full so that you can be made one, reconciled to God again. And so you're a new person in Christ, not of yourself, in Christ. And so uh, are you a righteous person? If you believe in Christ, what is the, the work of God is this, to believe in the one who God sent. Who did God send? Jesus Christ. And so believe. There's that weighty word of the soul again. Believe. It all comes down to faith. It was credited, credited to them uh, by their faith. Righteousness is credited by faith. So the prayer of a righteous person, one who is in Christ, has great power um, as it is working. I want you to really focus in on has great power. Maybe our prayers are hindered because we don't see the power of praying. Maybe we like to request things of God, but are we petitioning uh, from the heart uh, with the things that are needful, even some things that are desired from God in prayer? Um, approaching prayer that it is great power um, the, the Bible says that we can approach God with boldness because of Christ Jesus through the Holy Spirit that is within us. We have great power in the name of Jesus. And I want you to see that the prayer of a righteous person has great power, but the last phrase, as it is working. Not when will it work, not when it works, as it is working. You and I cannot see past one second from now. But the God of the universe, whom we pray to in the name of Jesus Christ and through the power of the Holy Spirit, knows all things past, present, and future. And so as it is working, um, if you've not received the answer to your prayer, it's not that your prayer hasn't worked. It's working in God's will. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Uh, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. See, our responsibility, church, is to pray. Pray for one another, as we've just seen here. Understand that God is going to refresh us, arouse us, awaken us when we toil in his work. His burden is not heavy. He carries the load uh, for us. We keep praying. We don't come to prayer just one time a day when we eat a meal. We don't come to prayer just one time as we lay our head down to rest and say, oh, yeah, 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 I need to catch up with Jesus on this. No, no, no. We are to always and constantly be praying, praying with thanksgiving and understanding that in our prayers, we, uh, righteous in Christ, have great power as the prayer is working. There's a lot in these words, and um, these, these are words that have to be developed and kindled in our heart. And that's why I said from the beginning of prayer devotion that we must have an understanding that prayer cannot be separated from the Word of God. Prayer and Word of God cannot be separated from coming together in the fellowship of the believers. Yes, literally church, coming together physically in church. Now, at this time, we're not able because of the coronavirus. We have the social distancing rules and Christians are to honor the rules of the state as long as they don't violate God's word. And so to be safe and to have a good measure towards one another, we're at a social distance. But we're still to gather. We're still to come together. And we do this through um, our devotions we do each day. We do this uh, in our live worship feed uh, on Sunday. We worship together in spirit. There is coming a day where the social distancing will be uh, removed, maybe uh, not completely as we knew it before coronavirus, but it's going to be removed and we are going to have the privilege, we are going to have the blessing, we are going to have the honor in Christ's name to come back together into the sanctuary of the Lord together face to face and 
hug to hug, and to worship Jesus Christ, our Savior. When we neglect that, we neglect our prayers. When we neglect our prayers, we neglect the Word of God. And so we need to be praying in the Word of God with the believers in fellowship and doing the things that God has said. If any of those four things are broken in sin, because it's sinful not to gather with the Christians. I want you to know Hebrews says that very clearly, the book of Hebrews. The do not forsake the gathering as some are in the habit of doing. Um, there should be no other priority but to seek first his kingdom. The kingdom gathers on the Lord's day, and if that's something that's been neglectful to your habit, you want your prayer life to change. You've got to change your habit and make God your priority with his children. Um, again, I, I can't stress it enough. The word of God has been given to us as our instruction book. It's the manual. And if we change it, if we alter it, if we reject it, if we deny it, if we manipulate it, we have no part in it. So we need to stay focused at this time. And uh, for your devotion and time alone with the Lord after we uh, close up here, I'm going to close up in just a second. I want you to read uh, today in your alone and quiet time, James chapter 5, starting in verse 13. I actually want to go uh, through <clears throat> verse 18. Uh, I'm not going to talk about it in, in this devotion, but Elijah, you and I are just like Elijah, and Elijah prayed, and it was answered. And I want you to see, um, if you have a good Bible, you go back to the Old Testament, and uh, you you read about Elijah, and you'll see, uh, because Elijah prayed um, in the right way, uh, and, and Elijah is just like us, the glory of God was seen, the power of God was seen, and some amazing things took place. Do you want amazing things to take place in your life? Do you want amazing things to take place in our time right now uh, when the world is under uh, so much uh, stress, pressure, fear because of this coronavirus? You personally in Christ Jesus can have an impact starting this day. But we must conform to the word of God. We must, must pray in the manner of Jesus Christ as he has showed us. And we must have our priorities right to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness believing that what we pray will be heard by our God and answered because of the name and the power of Jesus Christ. Love each one of you. We will uh, come back tomorrow about the same time um, and, and provide a devotion tomorrow. And I pray for your today and uh, pray that you walk strongly in the Lord uh, wherever you are in your homes or um, if you're uh, an essential worker and you're out there uh, praying for your protection as well um, just know that together in Christ we are a very strong church separated and disjointed from Christ we are very weak in the way that we walk so let us rely upon Jesus our Lord to strengthen and guide us each and every moment of our day love each one of you we will talk to you tomorrow May God bless you and may God keep you.